Hi there everyone, Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to take a look at using charcoal to create a drawing of a raven on gray toned charcoal paper. Now let's go ahead and dive into the process. We'll start by taking a look at the photo reference and then we'll go into the materials that we're going to use. So I found this wonderful photo reference on a site called pixabay.com, but I decided to do some editing to the photo to make it a little bit more suited for the drawing that I wanted to create with charcoal. So I brought the image into Adobe Photoshop and using the camera raw filter, I adjusted the contrast and the exposure. I took the color out and I also cropped the image down. Now, if you want to use this same photo reference, you can. I'll leave a link in the description below this video, which will take you to the lesson page over at the virtual instructor com which includes the photo reference we'll use vine charcoal which is soft and brittle and easily spread and blended and we'll use compressed charcoal which is much darker but harder to erase and I'll be using charcoal pencils which has compressed charcoal inside of them we'll also be using white charcoal I'll be using both pencils and stick white charcoal and we'll also need a kneaded eraser to clean up the edges and blending stumps to smooth transitions between different values. We'll get started here on our gray charcoal paper with a stick of vine charcoal. You can see I'm holding this charcoal stick in between my forefinger and my thumb. So I'm not holding it like a traditional pencil. Instead, I'm holding it like a stick and I'm making marks using the side of the material here on the surface. As you can see, this approach is very, very loose, so we don't have to be too concerned with making perfect lines or anything like that. We're just focused on the basic shapes of our subject here. And it's okay if some of the material smears and blends on the surface. That'll naturally happen when you use vine charcoal here. We're just using this sketch as a preliminary step. We'll slowly develop the details and refine the drawing as we go through the process. Even though we're not ready to define the details at this point, we'll go ahead and define the location of the eye since it's rather important. And we'll also refine some of the outer edges of the contours. Then we can go into the body and start adding some of our darker values. You can see here, I'm still being very, very loose with my marks. As you can see, I'm not covering the entire body of the bird. I'm leaving some open areas since we do see some areas of lighter value in mid-tone. Now we'll reach for a blending stop and work this initial application into the tooth or texture of the paper. You can see as the vine charcoal is blended into the surface, we get a variety of light and middle grays. This provides a nice base application for us to build our values upon. And speaking of building values, we'll now start to push the range of value. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. It's how we perceive the world around us, it's how we understand textures, and it's how we understand the light within the scene. So we want a full range, meaning we have the lightest lights and the darkest darks and a range of values in between. We'll start here with a bit of white charcoal and begin establishing the lighter values, like the highlights in the eye, the lighter values around the eye, and the highlights that happen on the feathers and the then we'll push some of the darker values, this time switching over to a charcoal pencil. Again, we'll start with the eye, making some of those values really, really dark. This increases the contrast, of course, but it also extends the range of value. We'll also begin working around some of the lighter areas that we just applied with the white charcoal pencil, but we'll still allow some of those vine charcoal applications that we applied initially to show through. This will create those middle grays that we need in the drawing as well. And as we slowly broaden the range of value, the form of the bird starts to make sense, and so does the texture. Here a blending stump is used to work some of the material into the tooth of the paper, creating a smoother appearance. The texture of the paper of course is rather rough, but a blending stump can make that appearance a little bit smoother.
Now we'll just simply continue this process of building up a range of value and increasing the contrast as we work our way down the body of the bird. And as we continue this process, we should think about the directional strokes that we make with both the charcoal pencils, but also with the blending stop. These directional strokes should flow in the same direction as the small feathers grow, and also around the form of the bird. So even though the value describes the form of the bird and also the texture, the directional strokes also play a role in communicating the form as well. As you'll notice, when we work with charcoal, we start with looser applications. And then as the drawing develops, we refine the drawing through applications of both white and dark charcoal in this particular case. So don't expect your drawing to be completely refined right from the beginning. Instead, understand that it's going to take some patience as you slowly develop the relationships between the different values in order to communicate the subject that you're trying to draw with charcoal. We'll gradually continue working our way down the back side of the body of the bird, making values darker and making them lighter where necessary. We're not concerning ourselves too much with defining intricate details. Instead, we're allowing the relationships of the values to communicate the subject to our viewer. Of course, one of the best things about working with both black and white charcoal is that you have total control over the range of value. Meaning, if you want to go back and make areas lighter, it's really easy to do so with the white charcoal pencil. And of course, if you need to make areas darker, you can go right over the top of areas that you've established as middle grays, making them much darker. In this way, drawing with charcoal is very similar to working with an opaque painting medium. Now, after establishing the back side of the bird, we're ready to work our way down to the legs. Here again, the process remains the same. It's simply a process of adding both dark and light charcoal to create that full range of value. Again, we're thinking about the directional strokes, making sure that they flow in accordance with the form of the leg. Where we see the small feathers, we'll pull strokes upward towards the body. And where we see the sections that we see in the leg and the talon, of course, we'll allow these lines to flow over the form, curving slightly. A kneaded eraser is used here to clean up some of the edges before addressing the second leg and talon in the same manner as the first. Now it's time to address the background. We'll start with a white charcoal pencil going around all of the outer contours of the body of the bird, refining and defining the edges. Using the pencil here allows us to work with precision, defining all of the edges to a sharp degree. But of course, this pencil would take a long time to cover the background completely. So we'll switch over to using a stick for the remaining areas. We'll go ahead and cover the entire picture plane using vigorous strokes. Now, as you can see, the texture of the paper is very evident and you might like this. In this case, however, I'm going to go over the top of it with a blending stop and work these applications in, creating a smoother background. 
In this case, I'm using the side of the blending stump to cover as much surface area as possible. Once our background is defined, we're ready to lay in the cast shadow. For this, we're gonna go back to the vine charcoal. In this case, I'm holding a stick of vine charcoal and a pencil extender. I'm applying light to medium pressure here as this fine charcoal is applied right over the top of the white charcoal, producing a gray. After our initial application of the vine charcoal, we can go back with the blending stump and work this application into the tooth of the paper, creating a smoother appearance. Then we'll add a little bit of variety and value in the shadow by applying a bit more of the vine charcoal. The shadow is slightly darker in areas where the form comes close to the surface, like at the bottom portions of the talons. Then we'll go back with a sharpened black charcoal pencil and add a few stray feathers. And now, our drawing of a raven using white and black charcoal on textured gray charcoal paper is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. If you're new to the channel here on YouTube, I suggest that you subscribe. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subjects here. If you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do so. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check that out. And if you want to learn more about drawing and painting, then I suggest you check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which include videos, and eBooks, weekly live lessons, which are all recorded and stored in our vault and weekly critiques, which are part of the members minute, as well as a year long curriculum for visual arts teachers. As always, thanks again for watching, and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.